Hey barbecue family! Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode on our channel. I'm Maddie and this is Kiki and we are Weber's only certified barbecue experts. Yes we are and we, I know we say this all the time but we were also nominated to be in the top 10 barbecue enthusiasts in all of North America. That doesn't get old. I don't care if you're doing that motion. I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you love saying it. I like saying it too, but we don't need to say it every single episode. We were the only women. Damn right we were the only women. Up top. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so today we are making a cherry wood smoked whole veal bologna. Okay, those okay. are a lot of weird things jumbled into one, but I have never been so excited for one of our recipes. Me too. This one is going to be amazing. Not only is it a veal bologna, not only is it whole, we're also doing it on the Weber kettle with the rotisserie attachment. The rotisserie. No, it, I think it's like the, it should come with like this kind rotisserie. of Rotisserie. Yeah, this makes the sense. Rotisserie. But I feel like it should be sh slower. Yeah, rotisserie. <laughs> oh, doing yeah. it. We're doing it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, Get oh, the shoe oh, off. In. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that's changing into something else. <laughs> okay, so the reason why we wanted to make this today is this is actually a very rebellious dish for us. Yes, okay? it is. When we were growing up, mom, we know that you're watching right now, our yeah, mom, mom would not let us have bologna. My mom is very, a very health conscious person. We always had fantastic Italian cold cuts growing up. You got up. your mort, you got your gabagol. Oh, I love a good mort and a good gabagol. I don't know why I went into the Sopranos talking about you getting a little piece of gabagol. Get a, yeah, I, know. I don't know why you're going to talk like that. But we always wanted regular old bologna. And there was a lot of other things that we wanted growing up that our parents didn't necessarily let us have. I will say that our parents didn't let us have, both mom and dad, I don't know why we're picking on mom here. Okay, what is Dad this? also wouldn't let us have this. What is it? Sunny D. Okay. Ew, Sunny D is sick It though. is gross. Now, okay, so I grew up, even though you guys are probably- Did you? Did, did, did you guys grow up? <laughs> but I did grow up. I moved out on my own. I'm thinking now is my time. I'm gonna try Sunny D, cracked it open. I always saw the little kids on the schoolyard, they had Sunny D, cracked one open, took a sip, and I was like, oh my, no, what is this? What is it? Is it like, I is don't it even know. Kool-Aid? Is it orange juice? It it's tastes like- It's not juice, it's not orange juice. No, I'm kind of grateful they didn't let us have that because it was yeah. so sick. Yeah, what a letdown. It certainly was. You know what's what yours? Okay, you know what I always wanted that mom and dad never let us have that yes. we eat all the time now and probably why we're obsessed with it now? Okay, what? Mr. Nudies. <gasps> yes! Oh my, Mr. Nudies, aka Mr. Noodles, aka Package Ramen. I remember. Our friend Trap Bistro. He is doing t tons and tons of delicious things with ramen, okay? He knows where it's Kevin, at. Kevin, we see you. We're constantly starving when we're looking at your channel. I could go for some ramen right now. I remember so people, kids in school always used to have them, even though kids don't have access to boiling water, so people used to just like crunch on Mr. Noodles with I the know. dressing on. It's disgusting, but I still want it. <laughs> now we eat it all the time. We can't wait to make this. This is a very rebellious cook for us. Hang on, buckle up, guys. This is gonna be one tasty cook. Let's do this. We're smoking a bologna. <laughs> to dive into our bologna and you're just gonna go like this all down the bologna okay and then turn your plate this way 
and then you're just gonna go like this all down the bologna. So you're basically just doing a bunch of X's and you're not going in deep. It's time to flip. Next thing we're going to do to prepare this bologna for the rotisserie is rub it down with regular old ballpark yellow mustard. You heard that right? And what that's going to do is provide two things. One, it's going to be a binder for our rub, and two, it's going to provide a delicious tangy flavor to this bologna. So what we like to do is start with clean hands and just get right in there. Oh, that's nice. And you want to make sure you're having a bit of a heavy hand with the mustard. So you want to try to separate out some of those cuts that Maddie did and get the mustard right in there without being too rough here. And you want to make sure you're covering the entire thing. Looking good. Doesn't that look amazing? Looking great. Looking great. I made a bit of a mess. It's okay. kind of everywhere. Yep. You go wash up. Okay. Now it's time for the seasoning. Now, today we are using a rub from one of our friends. That's the one barbecue. This one is called Beef Hammer. He's one of our good barbecue friends. He's actually sent us. Um, some barbecue t-shirts, which I don't know if you guys know this, but whenever we're not dressed up for the show, we live in barbecue t-shirts. We actually... <laughs> <laughs> no, Kiki! Oh my goodness! I guess it had to happen. Oh yeah. You're lucky that's just water. That got everywhere. We got him the bologna too, but it was so worth it. <laughs> Soaked to the bone, everybody. It didn't get your front though. It got my hair. It just got your back. <laughs> I feel like I could have done a lot worse. You're lucky I didn't. Re Ew. No, now it's retaliation no. time. Yes. No. As I was saying, <laughs> let's get these this veal bologna seasoned up. We're using this delicious rub. I can feel the water drip down my back. It feels like I've been running and I'm all sweaty, but I'm freezing. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get this veal bologna seasoned up. So we're just going in. Nice and liberal with the rub here. Oh, that smells good. Now, you need to stay there. I don't trust you behind me anymore. That was fun. <laughs> I always thought I was going to be the one getting you, okay? I don't know why you got me. I always knew you'd be the one to get it. Guys, who knew that Maddie was going to be the one to get that? <laughs> I can't see you guys and whoever just put their hand up, get it down. <laughs> Love you guys. The charcoal's ready to be dumped. set up the kettle for the rotisserie attachment, all we're going to do is move the grill baskets, one on either side of the grill because we're going to be cooking this bologna over indirect heat. And we pick up the rotisserie attachment and it sits right on top. Okay, we're going to put it right on top. And then what we're going to do is put a grill pan right in the inside here in the bottom because bologna is made up of about 99% fat as that's what makes it so good. But we don't want that fat going right into the bottom of the grill, so we're gonna catch it in this pan. Then what we're gonna do is put the lid on, open up the top damper, and let that baby preheat. Okay, I just need to say my back is soaking wet, I'm freezing cold, I can't wait till this grill gets fired up so I can warm myself by it, maybe dry off a little bit. <laughs> to be like one giant bologna with the two halves. So this is a two sister job. I'm gonna start off by, well oh, that's heavy. You wanna make sure to put it as straight as possible. And then you're just guiding the bologna straight through, keep it straight. Yep, nice and slow, put it in nice and slow. Are you pushing or am I guiding? No, I'm, you're. <laughs> Is it coming the I'm other like, end? it's not quite moving, but. <laughs> well, here we go. I feel the end coming I'm like, push out. it in, push okay. it in nice. Here we and go. Slow. And then you're lining it up on the center of the skewer here. This 
device here secures it. If we were grilling a chicken on here, it would keep it nice and secure so that it wasn't just like flipping and flopping during the cook. And especially because bologna has so much fat, if you didn't have those prongs holding it together, it wouldn't turn. It would just keep, the fat would melt on the inside and it would just sort of like hang out there and yeah. the rod would turn. Okay, this is heavy, so let's get going. Wow, all right. Keep it steady. Steady. She's coming in. Feed it in nice and slow where this is not a race. Looking good. I can feel it coming up the other side. Oh okay, yeah, nice. we made nice. it. Nice. We made it. See, now it looks like a gigantic hot dog. That looks perfect. Oh my goodness, that's heavy. Okay. So now we're just going to secure it with the other prong here. And we're just gonna tighten this knob here. This is a really good arm workout. <laughs> Make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. All right, this is ready to hit the grill. Almost hitting me in the head okay, again. this is like dangerous. Put it down. <laughs> We're cooking with cherry wood today, so all you're gonna do is make sure that you get some of the charcoal out of the charcoal basket, and then you're just putting it right in the corner here, and then putting charcoal on the top. The thing about rotisserie cooking is it's a very visual form of cooking. So you wanna see the flames, you wanna smell the wood, you wanna see the smoke, that's what this is all about. To us, this is our favorite part about using the rotisserie setting it up. So now we're just going to feed the metal skewer through the hole here, just like that. Make sure it's secure. Now all we have left to do is turn it on. Looking good. Now what can we do while we wait for this baby to turn? So I was making this sauce, I was adding ketchup, I added honey, I went back to the pantry to put the ketchup into the pantry. No, wait. And then, you put the ketchup in the pantry. What's wrong with that? Dude, that's disgusting. How ketchup does that grows gross? in the fridge. No, it doesn't. Oh. Barbecue family, what do you guys do? Do you put your ketchup in the fridge or do you put it in the pantry? All right, let's check this out. It's so good. It's so sizzling and bubbly. Oh my goodness. Look at all that score technique. Doesn't that look so good? That's perfect hot and fast for those crunchy bits. That's why we do hot and fast, everybody. Mmm, no, seriously. Alright, it's been taken off of the skewer. It is looking fantastic. But just before we start cutting into this delicious smoked bologna, if you guys have made it this far into the video, please hit that subscribe button. Make sure the notification bell is turned on and give us a like if you are just as excited as we are to slice into this baby. I want to give this two thumbs up because of how it smells Technically, already. Technically, this is four thumbs up already. And I also want to point out that you can see Nino lurking around in the background here because he also knows how good this smells. He's smelling it and wants it so bad, but you know what? I want it so bad. Kiki, make me a delicious life. Okay, so after about an hour at around 400 degrees, this bologna, as I like to say, <laughs> is super crunchy on the outside, still nice and juicy on the inside. Oh, okay. Can you guys hear this? Okay, let's get right up in there. Do it again. Oh yeah. yeah. That's correct. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. I think I just got some of my hair on it, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's, oh, oh yeah. Oh, I want that end piece. Okay, okay, but here's the tricky question though. Do you like it thick or thin? Oh, that's a good question. Thick or thin vlog, everybody. Let us know in the comments below. Well, I see the pros and cons to both. Thin, it's like delicate. It's You get that nice, like thin. Oh my goodness, that thin texture, but thick. You also get that delicious mouth feel when you're chomping into it, so I don't know. And I think it really depends on what you're doing too. Like if you're gonna go straight on a sand dough, I'd probably go on the thinner side. Or if you're going on a pizza, maybe like chunk it up a little bit, chop it, cube it. This smells amazing. Okay, honey, are you ready? Ready. All right, I gotta get a good sound for this yeah, one. What is the sound for this one? Okay, here we go. Okay, we're thinking this okay, is thing. What would like a rotisserie sound be? It has like a nice, gentle, fluid okay. motion. Okay, that means it's coming in okay. nice fluidly. Ready? I'm, I'm opening up wide. Are you ready? You want to open wide too. Okay, ready? Here we go. Oh, it smells phenomenal. Through the rub. So I love that we went with a beef rub for this because yeah. this is a veal bologna. 
This, it pairs perfectly Your little with the flavor. Do you want it? Yep. Do I ever your face? Yep. <laughs> you got it. You got it. <laughs> this veal bologna actually tastes like regular bologna. They don't really have that much of a different flavor. It's a little bit more complex in flavor. Really? A little bit more. It tastes like, if anything, I think you need a bit more to know for sure. I'm getting that cherry, light cherry wood right up the top. Wish we could have you guys here to really smell what this smells like. Imagine the fun we could have with this. This thing's huge. I'm distracted by the taste. I'm like, what did, what did you just say? <sighs> I don't even know. So what would you guys do if you had this amount of bologna on hand? Smoked That's bologna. We're planning on putting it into freezer bags. We're gonna make some bologna grilled cheeses. We're gonna do some pizzas, do some casseroles. Mm, okay. I can't <laughs> wait. And on that note, yep. Oh, Tastes yeah. so good. Uh, you guys